guys, it's Tina and I am back and I am here with the second part of my MAC makeup collection. This time I'm showing you all my face products and my lip products. So we're going to go through blushes, bronzers, highlighters, my lipsticks, my lip glosses, different products like that. And I also incorporated my brushes so you will see the brushes in all their glory. And what I will do since this video is extremely long, I know you guys don't mind watching long videos, but in case you have to watch it in parts or you just want to jump to a certain part of the collection, I'm going to leave timestamps below so you can just jump to a certain section of the collection and just watch it at your leisure. But without much further ado, so we don't make this video any longer, let's go ahead and jump into my MAC face and lip products. I figured we could start this collection off with my blushes and I do have a separate drawer for all my individual blushes and I have various brands so we have Tarte, Makeup Forever, Laura Geller, Becca but in these two dividers I have all my MAC single pan blushes. These dividers are from Target and they're the Rubbermaid brand and they all fit nicely in this drawer and they're nice and long so they hold a lot of compacts in them so I have two separate compacts that hold all my MAC blushes. I did do a full swatch video showing you all my permanent blushes from MAC so if you want to see that I will link it down below and you can check that out but I do have a bunch of limited edition blushes and I'm going to swatch a couple of them for you so we can just go back in time and see what goodies MAC had produced in limited edition collections. So this one is Prism. I think this one is a permanent blush, but it's just a beautiful neutral tone blush. It's actually really great for my complexion. It's a simple, easy, everyday blush. This one is Peony Petal. This one I believe is also a permanent and this is more of a Pepto-Bismol pink. We have Pink Cult. This was definitely limited edition. And this one is a very light kind of dusty grayish tone pink. And I actually do like this blush. It darkens up on your skin as you can see. It's, so it's not that really light shade you see in the pan. Then we have various other ones. This one is Immortal Flower, another very light looking blush. But this one again darkens up a little bit when it touches moisture on your skin. This is Koi Girl, which is one of my favorite pink blushes from MAC. It's more of a purpley type of pink. It's really beautiful. This one is Melba. I swatched this in the permanent shades. This one is My Highland Honey. This was also a limited edition shade. And this one was just a light peach. Again, a very light shade. This one is Peaches. Here we have Love Cloud. This one is something special, which is one of the cream blend blushes. I know people like to say creme blend because of the spelling, but I just keep it at cream. This one is Love Cloud. This is a very light blush again, a light pink. Then we have some more of the cream blend blushes. This is Tea Petal. And this one is a kind of a mauve nude shade. This one is Brit Wit and it's a nudie shade. I'm surprised that these aren't dried out because I've had them for a while, but they're still very creamy, surprisingly. This is Coffee Walnut, which is a contour shade. As you can see, it has more of a neutral undertone. It looks a lot olive, actually. This is Posy. This is Joy de Viver, whatever that says. This was a limited edition one. It came out with one of their special collections and it's a bright Carly pink. And then the last one is So Sweet, So Easy. This one is a very light pink, like a baby pink. Moving on to the second container, we have some more cream blend blushes. This is Optimistic Orange. And this one is a bold orangey shade. Very beautiful, actually. This one is Florida. And this was a special collection, too, where they did really bl bright, bright colors. So that's a beautiful, bold fuchsia pink. 
So we also have, oh my god, this is the Hello Kitty blush. Isn't that cute? Look at the little kitty cat, meow. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> this is Tippy. I actually really love this color for a long time. It's a bright, bold fuchsia pink. Like, look at that. So pretty and it's so blendable. I love MAC blushes. They're one of my favorite formulas and I think they do a really good job at them. And like I said, I have a full swatch video. You should definitely check them out. I think they're worth getting over other blushes on the market. Now let's see what else we have here. I have Modern Mandarin. This one is a bold orange shade. This is actually really beautiful on darker skin tone. See that? Oh, yes. This one is Instant Chic. This is another one that I really love. I actually have a dip in it. Again, a very natural looking blush. I have a couple more bold ones. This one is Life's a Picnic. It's a bold, bright pink. I haven't even used this yet. Oh my God, look how bold that is. That, whoa, that is intense. You would need a very light hand for that guy. These two are Let's Be Friends and What I Fancy which are two beautiful blushes. Again, another bright fuchsia pink and a very subtle coral. This is from the Venomous Villains collection. It's Bite of an Apple and it's for the evil queen from Sleeping Beauty. I love this one so much because it's like a red shade, but it's very subtle and it applies beautifully to the skin and it blends out nicely, giving you this beautiful flush on the skin. And then of course I have a few more of the permanent shades and then I have some of the mineralized blushes. This one is Happy Together and it's a duo of neutral tones. And you can mix them together. Of course, the lighter side you can use as a highlight. These are actually really beautiful. They give this subtle sheen to the skin because they are a mineralized finish. Oh my God, this is so, this is such a good highlight. Oh my God, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use this as a highlight. Then I have ones that people always talk about, like this one is Lovejoy. And this one is a beautiful blush for darker skin, not necessarily for my skin tone, much deeper than me. It actually would work great as a highlighter on rich, deep skin. You see that sheen to it? I'd have to use this very lightly as like a bronzy blush for my skin tone. This is Warm Soul, which everybody thinks everybody needs. It's a light, I don't know, like it's a neutral blush as well. And it's another one with a beautiful sheen. So again, I love these mineralized ones for highlights. And I wanna show this one because I think this one is beautiful as well. It's the shade Petal Power. Look at how beautiful that one is. Oh, this one is like a rosy pink with yellow sheen. Like, it's more like a highlight for me. Like, the pink doesn't really show up. It's almost like NARS Orgasm, but better. Because it has that, do you see that? Yes. So in addition to these single compact blushes, I have blushes in individual pro pans and you can buy these off the MAC website and they just come in the single pans and you have to put them in your own palettes. And I have them in various palettes. So these are four of the blushes. Like I said, you can check out my blush video. You will see all swatches of all of these. These are some of my bold, bright colors. Yes. These are some more neutral tones. Then we have a palette of my favorites, like this one is Devil, I love that shade so much. Then I have Z palettes with more shades in them. And I have some of the Pro blushes as well. These two shades are just way too deep, right? Where am I going? And then of course I have another Z palette. So those are all my MAC blushes. Now we're gonna move on to bronzers and highlighters because I have a ton of those and I think they're gonna be interesting for us to look at. And in this drawer, I have two dividers as well. So I have my MAC products on one side. So these have my larger size blushes as well as highlighters and bronzers. And then on this side, I have an assortment of other brands that are also highlighter bronzer type products. And I have a video that I went through this entire drawer. So I will link that down below as well if you're interested, but we're just gonna focus on the MAC products which are in this little divider here. 
So let's go ahead and zoom in on some of these so you can see them better. We have the Wonder Woman Matte Collection. These were beautiful. These were split um, blushes. It had a little bit of, it's almost like a bronzer on one side, but you couldn't really use it as a bronzer because it didn't really come off that way. These were not my favorite products, but I collected them because they were Wonder Woman after all, right? But they're really hard pressed in the pan and they're very difficult to get on a brush. Like they take a lot. They're really stiff. They're really hard to pick up. So not my favorite formula, but I had to collect it. Like who wouldn't? It's Wonder Woman. Like they did this red and blue. Look at this. It is so pretty. I think this was from the Surf Baby collection. Someone had mentioned it in the last video, but this one had the beautiful white packaging and it had the hibiscus print. Oh my God, like look at that. I mean, this is an overspray, but I'm not touching it. Like, look at that. Don't ask me why I'm saving it, but look at it. It's so, that's why I'm saving it. Cause it's so pretty. This one was my paradise. And the color, the blush was, look at the, the blush is really pretty, but I just don't have the heart to use it. I mean, would you? Oh my God. And then I have another Hello Kitty product. Ooh, it's so cute. And this had like sparkly pink glitter in the packaging. How cute is it? And this was a beauty powder, so it wasn't necessarily a blush. And it has the imprint of the little kitty face. Oh my goodness. But this is a beauty powder, so it's not really meant to pack a lot of punch. It's just meant to add a little color to your um, face and your skin to make it look a little bit luminous. Never really used it because as you can see, it's way too light for me, but oh, look how cute, how cute, cute, cute. Then we move on to like my skin finishes, which I absolutely adore. And I, I think MAC does the best mineralized products. Like they're really beautiful. They give a nice sheen to the skin without being glittery or crazy. Some of them can be crazy, but this, these, this formula is just really, really great. And this shade is porcelain pink. Now I got one that didn't have too much of the gold vein in, which I was mad at because this light pink shade, I mean, what am I doing with that? That is really not gonna flatter me, but it's really still a pretty shade. I could probably, ooh, yeah, maybe I could get away with that as a highlighter, but I had a thing about collecting all the mineralized skin finishes. I gave up on that a long time ago. Oh, and here's another limited edition one. This one, I don't remember what this was from, but it's Sunday afternoon and it had, I think this was with an artist because they did this design. Was it Vera? Bradley, I wanna, I don't know. Is that a clothing designer, is a fashion designer? I don't know, but it, her name was Vera and she did this beautiful little layout. Again, it's a face powder, so not necessarily one to give you full color payoff. She also did this one, I have both of them. So this one is Flower Fantasy. And again, it has that trio of shades. You know what? I might try to, why am I doing this? I don't, why, I saved it all this time and now I'm gonna do it, no. I don't think I'll get much use out of them so I'm just gonna keep them as they are even though I messed that one up, just for you guys. And then I have the Mac and Rihanna collection. This was one of the first products she came out with and this one was Hibiscus Kiss so it had the duo of a bronzer and a blush. And you know what, this was actually really beautiful. The bronzer is nice. It's a orangey tone, but it's warm enough to work on my skin tone. And then that blush was really nice, but it's hard to get just into the blush. So I never really use this that much, but I mean, it's Riri and I love Riri, so yep. Then we have others on this side. This one is Comfort. It's a mineralized skin finish again, and it's just a deep bronzy shade. This one is by Candlelight. And it's a very light shade, shade, but it has that gold vein in. This one is refined, which has a little bit of a coral vein into it. I should swatch these. Nice sheen to the skin. I'm gonna use this as a bronzer. 
This was when MAC came out with the extra dimension skin finishes. They did this double definition, which was a split. It had a very shimmery metallic side and then more of a baked satin side. This was so beautiful. Oh, look at this. This was really good. Like that's a golden champagne and then the bronzer side. Oh, these are so pretty. I need to use these. And this is what I mean, you get so caught up in getting the next best thing that you're not really enjoying the ones that you have. This one is another extra dimension skin finish. This was Glorify. Oh, this was such a bold gold bronze. I mean, look at this. Look at that, that's sickening. So pretty. Then we have the Sculpt and Shade Duos. This one has light sweep and shade stir it they just split it into like a contour color and a highlight shade and these are individual you can get them in individual shades oh remember when they did the ombre blushes so this one is spring shine which was the neutral tone this was the more bronzy shade so it didn't really show the ombre that much but it was still like a beautiful bronzy shade you could definitely use it as a bronzer or a neutral blush and I know they re-released some of these shades. This one was Vintage Grape, which wasn't my favorite because it's this dusty, dirty purple that wasn't very flattering. It looked more like a bruise. Like, it really wasn't a good color. Like, look at that. It looks like a dirty bruise. Yeah, not my favorite one, but I know everybody went crazy over these. This guy was the favorite. This one is Ripe Peach. I know they re-released these a couple of years ago. But it was just not the same like they were pressed a little harder and people didn't enjoy them as much but ripe peach was such a beautiful like coral shade oh yes this one was azalea blossom and then that was it right yeah moving on to like more mineralized skin finishes this one is light scapade really too light and shimmery and like silvery on my skin really bad this is another one that really wasn't as beautiful as the original because when they did this first it had such beautiful vibrant vein in and this just looks like just blue and it doesn't really come off as great as the original like look at that what is that no oh and the infamous stereo rose oh People went so nuts over Stereo Rose and they re-released it and I was able to get it during the re-release. And I really never got the hype. Like, it's pretty. Like, look, it is pretty, but it's nothing, like, to die over. I really never understood what people were going so nuts about. I even bought a backup of this. Did I ever sell that? Because I just never got the hype. And then I have two from the Osborne collection. So I have the Kelly one and the Sharon Osborne. Eh, I could have done without those. Those were just eh, pretty useless for me. And then these two pretty ones were from the Tartan Tail collection. And this is like a plaid print. It's, it was so beautiful. This was like a trio of shades. So you see you have two colors on top, you slide it across and you get another one. And this one was called a Triumphant Blush. The other one was Mark of Heraldry. It's a face kit, that's what they call them, face kits. So, yeah, really pretty, but I never got much use out of them. Now let's go to the really sexy part of the collection. We have more highlighters. Here is my favorite all-time highlighter from MAC. This is Perfectly Poised, and it came out with one of their holiday collections. And I told everybody, it was in stock for quite a while, they needed to get this. This was just so, like, stunning. Like, look at that sheen on my, oh, it's so pretty. And then, because you have the split, you can mix more of the light shade in to get a lighter highlight, or you can just use the bronzy shade, or you can mix them together. I just really love this highlight. Then the other one that has my heart is Petticoat. And this one is a similar shade, like a rosy gold. Oh, but it's more pink. No, it's definitely more pink. Not even rosy gold. It's definitely more pink. 
so pretty and then I got a couple of these new they did these recently these are face products like a face kit with four shades yeah this is sunny side and this is more suitable for golden undertones and darker skin tones again like a natural blush or a natural bronzer then I got this one which is the other worldly mineralized skin finish this one had the trio of shades so it had like a bronzy a pinky and then the silver the silver I wouldn't really use but the other two shades together are actually really pretty very nice shades here's the silver heh <laughs> you're not gonna use that on your face right I mean really no then we have the other quad type bronzers this is definitely for dark dark skin this is naturally enhanced then we have the other one. This one is perfectly lit. This is more of a rosy bronze. This one is another one of my favorite highlights. It's cheeky bronze. And this is another one that I told people to get because it's such a beautiful highlight on my skin tone. Like, I don't like intense metallic highlights and this one is just shimmery enough to be beautiful without being overwhelming and then of course we have these two shades this was from i forget the collection but it was so this collection was so good it was a great one they released it just a couple of years ago i think it was 20 um 15 that they did these they had oh darling and shaft of gold and these were extra dimension skin finishes. Really beautiful shades. Again, another one that people went crazy about because they're so beautiful and metallic. Love these. And then we have the four dual chrome highlighters that they just came out with. I did a haul on these and did swatches. So if you wanna see these, you can see them in that haul. And then these were from a summer collection. Again, it had the little water droplets on it and this beautiful teal packaging these were just bronzers they were nothing really special like like this one is refined golden which is in the permanent lineup they just kind of re-promoted them and this was a bronzer with the summer collections they do a lot of bronzy shades so this one is what delphic no aphrodite shell then the other one is delphic and that is it for the bronzers and highlight drawer now I will show you my lipsticks. I'm not gonna really go through these. I have my lipsticks in these dividers from the container store. They are actually for sports cards, so like baseball cards. So if you're a collector of baseball cards, you would store them in these. These just work great and they take up very little space and they're great for organizing your lipsticks. As you can see, I can put them five in each slot and they really organize them great my mac lipsticks are in these two and then i have a couple more on this side but i don't know they're just really great organizers for me for lipsticks you can put them face down and you can see the colors on top because you know with mac lipsticks you have just the black bullet and you can't really tell what color it is unless you know the actual name and then you have clear tops that you can purchase. I got these from, I'll link it down below, but these are clear caps that you buy separately and they're pretty pricey, but this way you can see the actual color through the top of the tube and you just place them face up like that so you can see the different colors, which is actually handy if you wanna store them that way. So on this side, I have quite a few different colors and different shades. I have some beautiful limited edition ones like this one with the blue and white packaging and this one is C'est La Vie. This is from one of their summer collections. Again, they do summer collections all the time and give them like that summer theme. So this is just a bold orange. And then I have like Ronnie Red from the Archie's Girls collection. This one was just a bold, deep red. I really love this red, actually. It's a really good one. And I have quite just, you name it, I probably have it. I just collected a bunch of their lipsticks. So we'll just show you the limited edition packaging. This was, oh, this was so pretty. This one is Petals and Peacocks. 
I got the two shades from the collection and the one that I died for, I use this so much on my blog. This one is Bloomin' Lovely. It was one of my most used lip colors. I just, I don't know, like I fell in love with that shade. It was just so good. I loved it, I wore it so much. I love this color. Then of course I have some of the signature shades such as Violetta, which is just a beautiful purple with a sheen. This one is Up the Amp, which I really love as well. This one is Mocha, which is a beautiful nude. And of course, I already have the stain in going on. This one is Quick Sizzle, which is a bold pink. This guy here is Sis. Everybody had this nude shade. I mean, it's a good nude as you can see, but like everybody went crazy. This was from the Venomous Villains one. This one is Toxic Tales. Oh, look how pretty. This one is the Mac and Rihanna one again. This one is called Bad Girl Riri. That is a good nude, isn't it? I think it is. So I have like a bunch of their lipsticks, as you can tell. And these are their, these were recent too. These are their Versicolor stains. I got a few of these and really I ended up not liking these. These give a little bit of a stain to the lips with a little bit of gloss to it. Just not my favorite formula from them, not my favorite product that they've ever done. Just, it wasn't that good, it just wasn't. I have to show you this one guys. This is Brave New Bronze and this was my favorite nude that MAC ever made. Like it was made for me. Like it's this peachy nude shade that just worked well with my skin tone. Oh, I love this one so, so much. I think this was probably my favorite collection that MAC did with the, it was like a safari theme. And this also had Wild By Nature, which is one of my favorite blending shades. So I love this nude shade. Guys, look at this purple package. Like, MAC killed it sometimes with their packaging, right? This is a matte shade and it's Evening Rendezvous. They also did these mateen lipsticks. What were they called? Yeah, mateen lipsticks. I love these. These were like a slim line lipstick and they were matte, but they were a comfortable matte. And I really love the formula of these. I hate that they got rid of these. These were so good. They were really comfortable to wear, but they were, they were matte. I feel like the new mattes that they've been releasing are closer to the Mateen lipsticks, the formula. Like they're really comfortable to wear. Oh, I should show you this one too. This was one of their Dazzle lipsticks. Oh my God, it went astray. This one had glitter in it. Like, I don't know what they were doing when they thought about doing this formula. But I guess they released it with their Dazzle glasses because people liked their Dazzle glasses. They figured they should do a Dazzle lipstick, which was just glitter in a lipstick. And as you can see, it got messy. But yeah, that's a Dazzle lipstick. And you know what? That's it for the lipsticks. I'm not gonna get really into them because, I mean, they're MAC lipsticks. That's how I store them and that's my MAC lipstick collection on this side and then these couple of slots as well. I know you're probably thinking, then where are her lip glosses? The lip glosses are a little bit too tall to store upright in the Alex drawer, so I store them in these acrylic drawers that I got from the container store, and they have dividers that you can put in them, so I put my tall products in these, and you'll see they hold a lot of product. I have some, I think those are Maybelline lipstick. I have my Shiseido and Clay de Peau lipsticks my lip tars and some um, some of my other lip glosses from Ruby Kisses, but my MAC lip glosses are all here. The ones I've kept anyway. I got rid of quite a lot because I don't really use lip gloss that much, especially the MAC lip glasses, which are very sticky lip glasses, so or lip glosses, so I don't really love them. But I kept a few of them, like this one is Best of Breed, which is a silvery one. A real collector's item. I have like True Babe. It's a really bold color. 
I have a blaze which is a permanent shade I think they came out with. I have some of the sassy limited edition ones. Like this one was just straight up creamy white. I have like Naked Space from the Neo Sci-Fi collection. I don't use these, I just have some of these just for collector's purposes because I just, I love them and they're so pretty. Like the special edition packaging, I just love to keep, but I really should get rid of a ton of these. But again, the collector in me is just like, no, don't get rid of them. Don't get rid of them. This one is what? All of my purple life. This came out with um, the blogger collection that Mac did with a bunch of beauty bloggers. This was from, was it Afro Bella that did this purple shade? And then um, Temptalia did an eyeshadow. Love those girls, so I collected those. This is Lavender Lust, which is one of my favorites. Now you can tell when a lip gloss goes bad, it starts separating and doing funky stuff. So just smell your products. If they smell like crayon, or they smell off at all, then get rid of them. If not, just don't use them if you keep them anyway. And honestly, makeup doesn't spontaneously come bust. It's not just gonna blow up in your collection. It just might not be the best thing to use. It might cause irritation or rash, or it just might not perform well. So it's not like it's gonna kill you if, it, if it's expired or past its usability date. Like relax people need to relax about people having expired makeup does that have anything to do with you no really this is russian red it's such a beautiful red but those are my lip glosses i should also mention the retro matte liquid lip colors that i have from mag this is their liquid lipstick formula and i got these when they originally released them i got a couple of shades to try out to sample them but this is not my favorite formula the formula is very inconsistent. So some shades are decent and then some are off and they recently released brand new shades and I'm just not interested in trying it out because it's like once bitten twice shy. I already don't think they're great so I don't wanna try the other shades if that makes sense. But I have a few shades here. Like I have the dark red one which is Dance With Me. This pink one is To Matt With Love. The nude one is Lady Be Good. This red one is feels so good. This orangey shade is quite the standout. And then this purpley berry shade is Old Lady. And then here are my lip pencils from MAC. I have these in pull-out bins against my wall, but I did a full swatch of my lip pencils from MAC. So if you want to check that out, I'll definitely go ahead and link it down below. But I have a bunch of lip pencils. I have colorful ones, red ones, neutral ones. And MAC lip pencils are among my favorite lip pencils. I just love how long wearing they are. They really apply nicely to the lips and they stay put no matter what. So they're great if you want that budge proof finish to the lips. So those are my lip pencils. Now let's go ahead and look at the face products that I have from MAC, which has dwindled quite a lot. I don't have as much as you might think anymore. I've kind of condensed my collection. Yes, I have. Oh, I gotta get a couple more. Okay, now we're complete. So I'll just go into like the primers that I have. I did get their MAC Prep and Prime Skin Enhancers. These were tinted primer products that had SPF in them as well. So you had like an orangey shade, a pink shade, more of a beigey shade, and then a full-on yellow shade. And these were meant to be color correcting primers. Not bad, I don't even know if they still have those, but they're not bad shades. Then I have, of course, gloss, which is just a glossy topper. You can put this on your lips or on your face. Then I have matte, which is like a silicone primer that fills your pores and also mattifies your skin. I have the Mixin Medium. This one is the eyeliner. Yeah, so I have the Mixin Medium eyeliner and I have the Mixin Medium. This one is mascara, right? Yeah, this is for lash. So you can mix your own colored mascaras with pigments. Yeah, pretty good. MAC does a lot of pro 
products so they're good for fashion shoots and f like magazine spreads and editorial looks they also did these little mix in mediums one is a gloss and one is a matte so this one is shine and they're in these pigment jars and I, I still don't know what you're supposed to use them for I guess you can use them with eyeshadows loose pigments to create a shiny sheeny product or like a matte product I don't know I haven't really used these because again I really don't know what they're for then we have the prep and prime products that you can apply under your eyes you can apply as corrector shades I have this is the prep and prime lash actually it's a lash primer but these are the prep and prime skins so you have this shade here is an orangey shade this one is called peach luster it's actually a great peachy corrector for darker skin Oh god, I have stain in from the lipsticks. But you twist it up so it has a brush applicator. And you twist it up and then you would apply it on your skin. And they're actually really good shades for correcting. So that's Peach Luster. This one is Prep and Prime Highlighter Dark. I don't know what that means. I guess you apply it under your eyes and it's for dark skin. So that's meant to be a highlighter. Then you have Bright Forecast, which... This one was more of another like highlighter shade with a little bit of beige to it. And then this one was um, what? Radiant Rose, which is the pinky one, which this is better for light skin, of course. A few more Prep and Prime products they had were the loose powder. So this is the Prep and Prime CC Color Correcting Loose Powder. And this one is the shade Recharge which is an orangey tone and it's meant to brighten up darker skin. Then I have the Pressed Prepper and Prime CC Color Correcting Products. This one was in the shade Neutralize, which is a yellow tone. I don't know why I even got this. I shouldn't even still have this because it really doesn't do anything. Then I have the other one. This is the Pressed Just Sheer color so it's not going to give you any color payoff it's just meant to set your face and give a blurring effect and then I had the prep and prime primer in natural radiance which is the yellow one then of course we have the infamous or the famous notorious big fix plus I have my oil control lotion which is one of my favorite products from Mac this is a really good oil controlling product it's not going to keep you matte or anything, but it helps to control oil and it's a good moisturizer. I have my foundations back here. I have the Studio Waterweight SPF 30 foundation, which is their version of a drop type liquidy foundation. Not really my favorite. You have the Studio Fix Fluid, of course, of NC45. And then this one is NC44. And then I have the Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. Another one that really didn't do anything for me. MAC foundations aren't my favorite. The best one I've used would be the Studio Fix Fluid. If you want really full coverage, it's a really good one to use. And then I have a strobe cream. I don't even know if they still make this. I think they just kept the strobe lotion, right? And discontinued the cream, but this one is just a very dewy, like glowy primer balm that you can put on. Oh, so pretty. Never really used it though, but I have it because, you know, stuff. Then we have my powders. I have the Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. This one is medium deep. And then I have medium dark. Great setting powders for a really natural look. Then I have the Studio Care Blend Powder, which is one of my favorite powders from MAC. This is in the shade dark, and I think this one is medium dark. So, really great setting powders. Absolutely love them. And then some more of the face products that I have are concealers and corrector shades. So, one of my favorite things from MAC is their Studio Conceal and Correct Duos, which have two shades. They have like a brightening shade, like a yellow tone, and then an orangey corrector shade. These are really great. I love the formula. The one I have right here is Rich Yellow and Burnt Coral. This is really great for my skin tone. So if you're like medium tan skin tone, this is really great. Then I have the darker version, which is Pure Orange and Ochre. 
this is great on deeper skin tones, but it actually works for me as well. So I like both of those. I really love those shades. I also have my favorite concealer from MAC, which is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I have two shades. I have NW35, which has more of a pinky salmon undertone, so I can use it to correct darkness. And then I have my matching shade, which is NC45. I also have a Select Moisture Cover Concealer. This is the shade NC45. And this one has a wand, so it's a nice concealer. It's lightweight, it's easy to apply. MAC just does some nice concealers. You have to check out the different formulations. They have quite a lot to figure out which one you would like. And this one is the Matchmaster Concealer. So they came out with the Matchmaster Foundations and then they release concealers which are in the twist up tubes. This is NC45. And then I also have the concealer palette. This is the Pro Conceal and Correct palette in medium deep. So it has their Select Cover Concealer and these are cream concealers. And I think this is one of the better formulas. So they have the two corrector shades which I think are, yeah, yellow and burnt coral. So it's rich yellow and burnt coral. Then they have NC40, NW40, NC42, and NW43 as the concealer shades. Now let's jump into my MAC brushes. If it's a MAC brush, I probably have it. If it's not hair, it's probably somewhere in my stash, somewhere packed away. But I was such a huge collector of MAC brushes. You name it, I got it. And I've since started using different brushes from different brands. Like I love my Hakuhodo brushes. I've fallen in love with some Sonia Kashuk brushes. Of course, my Eddie Funkhauser brush. And they're just other brushes that I use more now. But MAC brushes, they were my thing. And I love quite a few of them. Like this one is the MAC 133. It's a great highlighter brush. It's really soft, really great for highlighting or for applying blush to the cheeks. Really great blush brush. Then I have this teardrop guy. Oh, this one is the 138. Never found a use for it, but it's probably great for like just powder, loose powder on the face, but Never really got into this one, but I had to have it. I don't know, I had to get this guy. Then we have the Paddle Style Foundation Brush. This is the 190. This was my one of my first brushes that I bought from Matt because I thought you needed this for your foundation. Nope, never really liked it, never really used it, wasn't my thing. And then the MAC 109. Everybody on YouTube used to use the MAC 109 for foundation and I got it and I hated it. Like with liquid foundation, this is not meant to be used with liquids or creams because it's a natural hairbrush and it breaks apart. Like it leaves hairs across your face and people are like, oh, it's the brush's fault. And I'm like, no, it wasn't meant to be used that way. It was meant to be used with powder. It's a nice brush. It's not the softest. Like MAC brushes, after I found out about Hakuhodo brushes, I realized that MAC brushes weren't that soft. Then we have, of course, I have this large paddle brush. I don't know what got into me, but I had to have this. I knew I wasn't gonna use it, but I was just obsessed with getting this brush because it's a large fluffy paddle brush. Don't ask me, but I had to have it in my collection to say I have it. And this is the 189, a large fluffy paddle brush. Then, the toothbrush brushes. MAC released these years ago. They didn't really do well and now we have these Artiste brushes that everybody's going crazy about. I don't think I got the foundation one to this which is a larger one, but I didn't mind this at all. This was the, what brush was this? I don't think they gave, oh this is the Oval 6. So Artiste, yeah you're coming after MAC released theirs years ago. So. Don't think that Artiste is somehow innovative or anything. MAC did it first. And somebody did it before MAC, I am sure, but these were the MAC versions. This one was the eyeliner one. This is the linear one. It's just an eyeliner brush. This one was the oval three. This was for eyeshadow. Never got into this and this is why I will never get the Artiste brushes that are just overpriced because I know I didn't like these and I won't use them so I'm never gonna jump the gun and get the oval brushes from Artiste. Now this is the MAC 131. 
people went crazy and nuts over this the dual fiber brushes from MAC they use the what was that was it a 181 which is the flat top one never like that I think I got the smallest one that they have yeah this one is the 130 I got this one for like cream products for the cheeks this one will be great for like highlight products to get a sheer wash of color, but I never got into using the big stippling brushes for foundation. I learned my lesson after getting the 109 and that didn't work for me for foundation, so I knew that I wasn't gonna like like the 187 or the whatever stippling brushes they had. I, and I didn't like how it looked when people applied their foundation with it. It just looked like heavy coverage. It just looked like too much work. But this one is the 131, which is more of a brush, like a dome top one. But it's good for like cream and liquid products for fading them out. This one is the 129, which is the blush brush. And I actually like this one. It's not a bad brush, but it is scratchy. It is not the softest brush, but if you have like a blush that's really hard pressed in the pan, this is a great one for picking that product up because it can really scratch the surface and pick the product up. Then you have the, 10, the 169, which is the angled brush. This was the OG contour brush. Like, who was going to tell me anything about my contour? This was the OG. Really, it, it, you know what? It's soft. It's nice. It's decent. This is the 165, which is the smaller tear-shaped brush. This, I think people would love for removing the excess powder from under their eyes when they use the baking technique. This one is a nice one. Then another dual fiber brush, this is the 159. This is a smaller blush brush shape. So it's a paddle brush shape, but it has a fluffy top. So you can use this for highlighter. Just getting diffused color on your cheeks, that's really good for that. And of course they had dual fiber eye brushes. This is the 286, which is a dual fiber eye brush, blending brush. They also did the, this one is still one of those, right, 286. They also did these split haired brushes. I remember these when they did these. So they have like a natural side of the brush and then they have a synthetic side. So you were able to use both sides of the brush for different type of products. So one for powder, one for cream. This didn't really pan out well because, I mean, really, you're gonna get product all over the place. It's not gonna be on just one side of the brush. So. It's a cute idea and I like that I have it for collector purposes, but it wasn't very useful. This is the 227, oh my God. Who was it that told us about this brush? Was it X Sparkage, Leisha here on YouTube? She was like, this is a great eraser brush. You can use it under your brows to like clean up excess products if you went too high. It is so scratchy. This was just, no, no. But collector and me got it. Another one of the split fiber brushes, this one was the eyeshadow one. This is the 235, so it had the synthetic and then the natural hair. Again, doesn't really work the way they intended it, but nice to have it. Then here's the blending version. This is the 234, so it has those two sides. You can see how impractical this is, right? In actual use, like, it's not going to work. But they actually work just if you use them like a regular brush. They also had this eyeshadow dual fiber one. This one is the 287. And it actually works nice for cream products if you're applying it to the eyes or you can use it for under eye concealer. Nice enough. Then of course my 217s, like I couldn't live without these. And these are years and years and years old. I have since used better brushes now, like the Hakuhodo J5523, 5522, even the J142, I prefer over these, but these were good starter brushes and they're still very good. It's just, I think Hakuhodo does better brushes now. Oh, my MAC 242s, I love these. I've never found another brush that replaces these. These are just great for detailed work, for loose pigments, for damp eyeshadows. They just work well and they can give you precision for like cut creases or detailed work. So I love these and they're great for the lower lash line as well because they have this really defined shape. You can get right up against the lower lashes. Love those. Now, if you are a MAC fanatic, you remember the 219, the 219 brush. This is the pencil brush everybody went crazy about when people started highlighting the inner tear duct. Like this was the guy you had to get. 
and it scratched the hell out of me and I never really used it. But this was the guy, that's the pencil brush from MAC. Then the MAC 239. Again, another great shader brush. This is one that I've never replaced either. If I'm looking for a good eye shader brush, this is the one I gravitate towards. It's the MAC 239. It's just, it's just is. It's the GOAT. You know what I mean? It just is. We have a concealer brush. This is a 249. You know what? I never gave this guy a chance. I'm going to use this more. But it's just, uh, again, a detail shape concealer brush. Oh my god. You guys, a 226 brush. Did you go crazy over this? This is like the tapered pointed blending brush and everybody was like, oh, this is so great for smaller eyes and getting in the little crease area and it's so awesome and ah. they made it limited edition. Then they released it as a permanent brush and it went crazy. Like people went nuts over that brush. The eyeliner brushes, they have two versions. They have a synthetic hair and a natural hair. The 266 is the synthetic hair and then the 263 is the synthetic hair. I prefer the synthetic hair brush. This is great for gel eyeliner, for creating a upper lash line liner. Really great. Actually works great in the brows as well. I love these angle brushes. I always liked them, thought they were great brushes. The lip brush is the 231. This one I love for detailed work on the eyes, believe it or not. I love doing cut creases with this one, but it's a great lip brush as well. It's a really nice one from MAC. I have the 228 which is a nice one again. This is just a little detail brush, just for detailed work. It's a nice little brush. Um, the MAC, what is it? 226, that's another 226. They have the little liner brush. This is the 210 brush. It's a very fine tipped liner brush. Great for detailed work again. I also have a couple more brushes that I can't put my hands on right now. But like the mascara brush that MAC has, it's the, I forget what it is, but it's a little fan brush that you use for mascara. Love that one as well. And they have another teardrop highlighter brush that I love. Let me see if I can find them actually. Here we go, I found them. So this is the MAC 135. It's a little bit dusty right now, but never mind that. But it's like a large floppy powder brush. It's actually great for like a light application of powder. Nice one. This is the 137. This is the one I was talking about. That's a great highlighter brush. It got, <laughs> it got a little squished, so it's a little angled, but it's supposed to be straight. But it's so lightweight. It's good for applying like a light diffused color on the cheeks. It's a really nice brush. This is the MAC 170. Again, a little bit dirty. Don't mind that. This one is great. They created this to use with their cushion foundation. It actually works really good for the cushion foundation plus any liquid or cream foundation that you have. Again, it's the 170. Look at this one, how cute it is. This is the 197, but it's the SH, which means short handle. So it has a shorter handle than like a typical MAC brush. So you can get the regular version that has a normal size um, handle, but it's a flat top um, dual fiber and you can use this for like contour getting really detailed work Like if you're doing a nose contour or something, that's good for that This one is the 221 which is a very small detailed blending brush for like the eye area This one is great for detailed work around the eye area So you can do very precise blending or it's good for you if you have small eyes this is the MAC 212. It's a flat top brush. You can use this for eyeliner, lower lash line, eyebrows. It's just a very versatile little detail brush. Love this one as well. And then here is the fan brush I was talking about. This is the, I don't even know what the number is. It's scratched off. But this is the little mascara fan brush. And what you do is you can use this to separate your lashes and clean up your mascara or when you mix your own mascara like colored mascara you can use this to apply the actual product to your lashes it's a little fine fan brush and it's just really great for lash work now let's go ahead and finish up with my accessory products from mac that don't really fall into any specific category so I love my MAC makeup wipes. These are the wipes that I use to remove swatches off my hands when I'm doing swatches. I also use them to remove liquid lipsticks because I just find these work really great to remove long wearing products. So if it's waterproof or budge proof, smudge proof, these are really great. And I just love them and I've never used another wipe that I liked as much. These are the 100 pack wipes and these are just really economical to buy them in bulk like this. Then I have my Volcanic Ash Exfoliator. 
Mac released this years ago, then people really loved it and asked for it to come back and they did re-release it. I think they have got rid of it now, but I still have a backup of that. That's a face product. I also have the Mac brush cleaner, which is actually one of my go-tos for quick spot cleaning of brushes. I have this in a little spray bottle that I keep at my desk and I just quickly spray my brushes and clean them. I have Mac lashes. Don't really use these a lot. They're pricey, but they're nice. But you know, there are other lashes on the market now and much cheaper lashes. So I don't really get into these too much. These are, what style are these? Let's see what number, this is number seven. This one is 43. This is another 43. This one is 34. And this one is another 34. Don't really use them. I've worn these already and they're just back in their little container. The only thing that I will say I love about MAC lashes is the actual little container. They're in these little plastic containers and you just easily slip them out and slip them back in and it's so great for storing lashes. I really like the packaging. And then last but not least are my only MAC nail polishes and I only got these because they were like a special color or something that I really thought was unique at the time. This is not even that unique. This is a share nail polish, it's called Pretty Kiss, and it's just a very light cream shade. Like, I don't even know. It's a pretty bridal color though, very nice. This was when French nail tips were a thing, so this would be the share base color and then you'd have the white tips. This one is Mean and Green, and this is when those Duo chrome polishes started getting popular and Mac released this one. This one is a purple like a violet and green duo chrome And I mean it was a really pretty color, but nah There are others that are better now This one is Freight to Order which was an opalescent pearl shade and I got this because it's just a really beautiful white With that iridescence. I actually really like this one very unique shade and then this gold one here is Originality and it's just a bright bronzy gold. I don't think I have anything else in my collection like this, so I definitely love this shade. All right guys, you made it to the end and if you did, kudos to you because this was an extremely long video. So high five, high five. Now let me know what other brands you want to see. I think the second brand that I'm gonna cover is Urban Decay because I have a lot of products from Urban Decay as well. I think that's the second largest brand in my collection and then we'll follow through with the other brands. Probably I'll combine some of the smaller brands that I don't have as many products from but we'll see how it goes and I will start adding to the playlist and I will link the playlist in every one of these descriptions so you can jump to the playlist if you're interested in seeing my brand only collection so thank you guys so much for watching and links are down below it to my instagram and twitter page so definitely follow me along and until my next video which will be very soon i'll talk to you bye guys